After good long lives, three men died on Advent Sunday and were met by St. Peter at the pearly gates. In honor of this holy season, St. Peter said, we're making it easy to get past the gates if you possess something that at least remotely represents the symbol of the Christmas holidays. The first man fumbled through his pockets and pulled out a lighter and flicked it and said, it represents a candle. We pass through the pearly gates, St. Peter said. The second man reached into his pocket, pulled out a set of keys, and shook them their bells. St. Peter said, We may pass through the pearly gates. The third man searched his pockets desperately and then sheepishly pulled out a pair of woman's glasses from a jacket pocket and waved it at St. Peter, raised an eyebrow, and asked, <laughs> Just what do those symbolize? And the man replied, they're my wife's, they're Carol's. <laughs> Today we're going to hear a little about finding Christmas symbolism in other sources, and that was the only joke I found that could come close to fitting. There are lots of, lots of symbols at Christmas. Many have ancient, non-Christian pagan origins. For example, mistletoe was used by the Druids to celebrate the coming of winter long before the birth of Christ. They believed that everyone had healing powers and they hung it up as a winter decoration. In Scandinavia, mistletoe symbolized peace and pardon. It was linked to the Scandinavian goddess of love, Frigga, which may be why it's associated still today with kissing. Because it was a pagan symbol, the church originally tried to ban mistletoe at Christmas and suggested it be replaced by holly. So now we have both. And each bring us joy this time of year. The date we celebrate Christmas is also symbolic in Christianity. Today, article notes that, quote, the eventual choice of December 25th reflects a convergence of concerns about pagan gods and the church's identification of God's son with a celestial son. December 25th already hosted two other related festivals, the Roman birth of the unconquered son and the birthday of Mithras, the Iranian son of righteousness, whose worship was popular with Roman soldiers. The winter solstice, another celebration of the sun, fell just a few days earlier, seeing that the pagans were already exalting deities with some parallels to the true deity. Church leaders decided to commandeer the date and introduce a new festival in uh, Christ Mass. What we now call Christmas was that new joyful festival. Co-opting symbols can also be traced to the Christmas stories themselves. And the co-op being in the stories in the Gospels is brilliant. Before Jesus, Rome claimed, Rome claimed that Caesar was born of a virgin associated with a star and the Son of God. He was also called Lord, Prince of Peace, Redeemer, and Savior of the world. The first Christians took and made all those claims about Jesus, we still do. At that time, making use of such titles for the newborn Jesus would have been heard as either low lampoon or high treason. Rome wasn't laughing. You see, such majestic claims were reserved for elite born emperors, not lowly born peasant boys. Most certainly not for one whom the empire convicted and X is a lonely criminal. Giving such a fellow titles and honors reserved for the divine emperor of Rome was absurd to the Roman Empire. To them, Jesus was nothing more than a peasant and a criminal. But of course, Jesus' followers then and now know Jesus as so much more than that. He lived and he loved so well, people experienced God incarnate in him and on his way. So much so they could continue to experience God through Jesus and his way after he was executed and supposedly disposed of by Rome. Jesus became God incarnate in the world, not just in his life, but ever since for his followers. 
And the early Jesus followers brazenly made it clear that God was decidedly not experienced in Rome's mighty, rich, and powerful emperor and deity, Caesar. Rather, God was experienced in and at, through Jesus, the one whose entire life from start to finish was the very opposite of Caesar's. That opposite life created a path of peace and hope and love. It's a life that still does that and continues to bring good news, good tidings, a great joy for all people, just as the angel blessed proclaimed. If we listen carefully to the nativity stories in the Bible, we can hear them as parable, parables where things happen with symbolic meaning. They're all about venerating the God of Jesus, not Caesar. Set in a rough and tumble world, they pit heaven's empire against the earthly empire of Rome. Caesar was of elite birth and lived a life of wealth and power, imposing violence and injustices on others. Jesus was of humble birth and lived a life of peace, love, joy. Caesar obtained power over his people through violence, oppression, exclusion, hate, and war, creating bad news of terror and sorrow for non-elites. Jesus obtained power over God's people, promoting non-violence, justice, inclusivity, love, and peace. And Jesus created good news, a great joy for all people. Caesar and Jesus polar opposites. There's more than a little irony to Rome's claims that Caesar was born of a virgin associated with a star and called Son of God, Lord, Prince of Peace, Redeemer, and Savior of the world, as those very images and titles are now associated with Jesus and have been so for 2,000 years. We can hear the gospel say, no, Caesar is not God. Caesar is not those things. We reject those titles for him. The one to whom such titles belong to is Jesus, whom we experience as God incarnate, the Christ. In our lesson today, the followers of Jesus can be heard to be symbolized by those shepherds, people who were rough and tumble, outcasts in the culture at that time. Because of Jesus' birth, those outcasts, Nobody's to most in their time and place. Experience God in the form of an angel and the glory of the Lord. And it scares them. But they're told not to be frightened. That God's incarnation on earth and in their life is about good tidings and great joy for everyone. For everyone. God incarnate in Jesus is not to be feared. It's the God we know. It's good news and joy to the world because Rome Caesar is not Savior and Lord. Heaven's Christ is. And peace is not for the world's elite alone, but peace on earth, goodwill, is for all, all of humankind. For 2,000 years, ordinary people have taken great joy in it. And we still live. Thank God.